All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, depending upon where you are or when you're listening to this. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to the NAFA Member Benefits webinar. Our topic this month is NAFA's designations and certifications. And um, we're going to talk for a little while. We've got a few people um, signed up to participate uh, live with us, but we will be recording this and posting it for people to follow later. If you are watching this live and have questions, um, feel free to put them into the Q&A and later on in the program, we'll uh, take a look and see if we can answer any of your specific questions. So, uh, NAFA administers two professional credentials, uh, the Life Underwriting Training Council Fellow Designation, or LETCF, and the Life and Annuity Certified Professional Certification, or LACP. Uh, I'm John Boyle, I'm the Vice President of Professional Credentials with NAFA, and I'm here to provide some background on the LUTCF and LACP, and I'm happy to be joined today by a panel of successful NAFA members, each of whom hold both the LUTCF and LACP, and can share with us uh, the advisor perspective on these credentials. So our panelists today are Heather Lindsley, who is the owner of Guided Path Financial in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Heather has been serving as a holistic planner and a NAFA member since she started in the business in 2004. Uh, we have Michael Stave, who is an independent insurance wholesaler based in Northwest Florida, working with advisors all across the country. Michael has been a NAFA member for 11 years and is a regular NAFA presenter and an MDRT focus session speaker in 2019. And we have Jeff Chernoff, who is a third generation insurance and financial advisor from Tampa, Florida, who joined NAFA in 2011, the same month he was licensed. So before we talk to the panelists to hear more about their experience earning these credentials and incorporating them into their practices, let me provide a little bit of background. And on this. So let me get this, share my screen. Here we go. So the LUTCF is likely the most widely known of the NAFA credentials uh, with more than 70,000 insurance professionals having earned the designation in the 36 years of its existence. LUTCF is a course in the fundamentals of being in the business. The curriculum focuses on essential prospecting, selling, and practice management skills, along with the thorough working knowledge of life and multi-line products and services. In providing the LUTCF, NAFA is offering a way to jumpstart an early career in insurance and financial services. The designation is administered by the College for Financial Planning, part of Kaplan Financial Education. The curriculum consists of three courses. The courses are online and available as both the live interactive classes and also an on-demand self-study format. Uh, live in-person classes can also be hosted by organizations such as agencies, companies, or NAFA chapters, um, and someone can reach out to us or the College for Financial Planning and set that up if, if interested. The three courses, which, uh, which are each nine weeks long when taken in the live interactive class, uh, three courses are Introduction to Practice Management and Life Insurance, which focuses on developing a business plan, ethics, financial planning, and risk management, Introduction to Life Insurance Products and Life Insurance Prospecting and Selling Skills. The second course is Insurance and Investment Products. Um, hold on a sec, get the right thing in there. There we are. The second course is Insurance and Investment Products, which focuses on life insurance and annuities, mutual funds, disability income, long-term care, health and employee, uh, health and group insurance, and uh, property and casualty insurance. The third course is risk management applications, which addresses retirement and estate planning, special family situations, and presenting basic plans to individuals and business owners. The curriculum combines classroom learning and field training to equip agents and financial advisors with the knowledge and skills to put them on the path to career success. Uh, the greatest testament to the practical approach taken in the LUTC LUTCF curriculum is a survey which showed 50% of the students enrolled in the LUTCF program made a sale as a result of a homework assignment in the very first course. So LUTCF is about helping an advisor get into the insurance business and stay in the business. Uh, LUTCF courses qualify for state insurance CE as well as CE for other industry credentials. And NAFA members receive 15% off the LUTCF course tuition, as well as discounts on many other Kaplan financial education courses when taking it through Kaplan. And go with this. So the other um, credential is LACP, and this is NAFA's newest credential. The LACP, Life and Annuity Certified Professional, is a certification focused on demonstrating an advisor's professionalism in the area of life insurance, annuities, and helping clients achieve financial security. 
where the LUTCF is a training course and advisor can begin their first day in the business, LACP is a consumer facing credential intended for advisors with several years of experience and prior education. LACP grew out of NAFA's 2020 strategic plan, which included an expansion of the association's outreach to consumers on behalf of the qualified professionals NAFA represents. So in order to earn the LACP certification, an advisor must first meet the eligibility requirements, which are essentially to be licensed as a life insurance agent with at least five years of experience or three years experience with additional specific education credentials, and to make a commitment to ethical professional conduct as outlined in the NAFA Code of Ethics. LACP candidates must pass the LACP exam, which is a proctored, a proctored exam administered at conveniently located testing centers around the country, or more commonly now during the COVID pandemic as a live online proctored exam. The exam includes 150 multiple choice questions organized around three content areas or domains. These domains are product knowledge, which includes knowledge of life insurance and annuity products essential to providing competent financial security solutions. Consultative sales process, which means understanding and applying the skills, techniques, and best practices of the sales process necessary to understand a client's circumstances and to provide and implement an appropriate plan for the client. And ethical, legal, and regulatory requirements, which means understanding and adhering to a high standard of ethics and the legislative and regulatory issues necessary to meet the legal and professional expectations to safeguard client interests. That's this, there we go. So the LACP certification is accredited by the National Commission of Certifying Agencies. Uh, this is the same group that accredits the CFP and it's approved by a growing list of companies for use by their advisors. It is one of only 10 credentials listed on FINRA's accredited designations list. Just three years old, the long-term plan for the LACP parallels that of the CFP. You've probably seen TV commercials and other promotion of the CFP to consumers as a mark of professionalism they should look for. As the LS LACP grows in numbers and stature, it is NAFA's plan to take the promotion widely to consumers through a variety of media. One of NAFA's first steps in building connections with consumers is the new financialsecurity.org website. See that there. So you can find out more details about LUTCF and the LACP at any time in the Talent Development Center of the NAFA.org website. But we're fortunate today to have a panel of advisors uh, who can carry both the LUTCF designation and LACP certification with us now. So let's talk to them. I will cease sharing my screen and we will open conversation up to uh, Heather and Mike and Jeff. So um, let's talk a little bit about LUTCF first, right? That's the one that um, we suggest people kick off their career. And I'd love to hear some stories. Jeff, I know uh, you took, uh, if I recall, you got uh, started very early with LUTCF. Can you tell us how you got started and, and what it's kind of meant to you? Absolutely. So I work in a family business and my father, who um, at the time when I first started had over 30 years experience, said, um, I think the best thing for you to do is to uh, take the LUTCF curriculum. It's how I learned. It uh, really provided um, some good concrete uh, experience. And so I signed up for it. And um, one of the things that I learned in the prospecting course was to um, join your local chamber of commerce. Uh, I um, took my very first um, LUTCF course in uh, 2011, and I can say that last year in 2019, 25% of my um, revenue came from uh, still being a member of the Chamber of Commerce, and I would not have not joined had it not been for that recommendation from uh, my LUTCF course. Outstanding. Uh, Mike, Heather, how about you? How did you get started? Either one of you. Well, uh, LUTCF was kind of loosely recommended to me by a couple of uh, my mentors in the business and, and having a history of being a little bit of a procrastinator. I still waited to do it until I had been in the business for 10 years already. Um, I did speak with uh, David Manioni at the college and got a special concession to both take and teach the course simultaneously. Um, but it was something I had always wanted to do, uh, both my mother and her father uh, who is actually, that's his LUTF certificates behind me, uh, were both moderators as well. And it has enabled me as a moderator to network with advisors, some of whom have become lifelong friends because of it. Mike, I'd love to expand upon that a little bit because I would mentioned earlier that now, I mean, the, the LUTCF has undergone a change, you know, over the years. 
um, and now totally different with the being taught online um, as the, the main way it is taught as opposed to I think when you were really moderating was very much in person. But we still emphasize while it is available on demand that you can access the material and go through it on your own, it, we still recommend people do the online live classes uh, because at least virtually, you know, the, you can make that connection with an instructor, with a moderator, you can make that connection with classmates. I mean, would you say that's something that uh, is recommended? It sounds like it is from your experience. Absolutely. You know, I'm very much a, a people person, uh, which has been hard the last four months. Uh, I like being in person, getting a coffee, getting a cocktail with someone that I'm working with, uh, especially if it's someone that I'm mentoring or teaching uh, with a program like LUTCF. It's absolutely vital to have that live interaction. Uh, one of the things that David recommended to me when I first became a moderator is he said, you know, if you're teaching a segment of the course that you're not especially an expert in, um, one that I did uh, actually bring it, he recommended bring in an expert from outside. You know, if you have a colleague who's an expert in a particular area, there's no reason you can't bring them in as a guest lecturer on a particular segment, which I actually did when it came to the group benefits sec section, because that's an area that I'm completely a novice in on group benefits. So I had a colleague that I know come in and actually teach that segment with me. Excellent. Heather, how'd you get started with uh, LUTCF? What's your story? Yeah, so it was suggested uh, highly by my uh, general agent at the time. And I did take it virtually. There were no um, in-person classes. Mm -hmm. And so my, my class situation was, I think there was five to 10 of us that were on the on the call on a regular basis and nobody even in my state was part of my class. So it was interesting for me as we worked through the different sections to just hear how, although business is incredibly different around the, you know, around the different, in the different states, the different rules and regulations that might each state might have, how s some of the trials and tribulations are always the same, right? Like we always have peaks, we always have valleys, we have things we have to work through. We have the no's, you know, the excitement from all the yeses. And it's just really nice to, to be able to talk to other people and work through situations. And I would say that I definitely had um, a lot of business spark out of the homework. You know, it, it's a class where you really have, um, it integrates itself almost like an internship for your job. And you know you have to get so many applications in this course, and you have to see so many new people, and you have to you know create your elevator speech, and it really is a holistic plan class, right? Like it does, it touches on everything. So I think it's the best thing you can do when you start in the business. So it it sounds like also a mix. I mean, we've got. Uh, Jeff, I think you got right to it, and Michael, you know, years later, and Heather, maybe a little later, that even if you've been in a business a while, it, it takes you back to fundamentals that maybe you need a reminder on or that may be new to you. Absolutely. I mean, it, uh, you know, I came up through the brokerage side of the industry, so I never really had the traditional career training experience. So LUTCF was really my first formal prospecting training of any kind. And that was after 10 years in the business already. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, mine started right away. I, I actually started my first um, job was with Catholic Financial Life. So, you know, very small fraternal life insurance company. So the, the designation of the LUTCF was very important um, to help in the training, you know, and then I also had done the FIC and the FIC. Yeah. So there's, there's so many different courses out there, but I think that the um, LUTCF one is really, like I said, it strikes every portion of your business. It doesn't leave anything out. And so even like Michael said, you know, maybe he's not uh, the expert on employee benefits, right? But you still need to know something about employee benefits, right? So I think that that's where the course is really well defined because it lets you know that even though you are not the expert in that, you still need to know something about it. And then you need to know that you need to bring in an expert, right? And it's okay to do that. Yeah, uh, Heather brought up uh, probably one of the most important lessons of LUTCF is it's okay not to have the answer, mm -hmm. but what's important is knowing where to get the answer. Okay. Now it sounds like for, uh, uh, if I can project a little that uh, the connections you make, and Heather, I think you talked about it a little bit, sort of outside your normal circle can, can be a benefit. 
um, that you know you may have people in an office that you're working with and everything, but it sounds like the the changing of pers expanding of perspectives is useful as well. Does that sound right? Great. So you know that's a little bit of an overview of of what the ideal thing of LUTCF is. Uh, you know we've got a few people who are watching this live right now. This is being recorded. Uh, but for those folks who are watching live, just a reminder, you can go into the Q&A part of Zoom and add questions if you like. And we'll try to keep an eye on that and bring those in. Um, but maybe now we'll talk a little bit about LACP. So, uh, you know, LACP, as I said, is uh, a newer thing. It's, it's part of this longer term vision of what NAFI can be doing and focusing some of our efforts out to, towards the consumer and we need that mark. So we want something that uh, helps differentiate uh, a truly professional advisor. Um, so, you know, I, I'd love to hear about sort of how, I know there's some different different times that some of you got involved, but you know, Jeff, how did you hear about LACP and uh, get inspired to, to get involved with it? Tell us how that started for you. So with LACP, um, in order for um, the, the credential to be um, certified, uh, they needed to have a certain amount of um, people uh, taken and, and pass a test. And so um, NAPA has provided so much uh, to me that when there was an all call for participants, um, it was a very easy decision for me to, um, to line up and take it. Uh, I was also very fortunate that one of my mentors um, is very active uh, with NAFA and he, um, he had recently uh, earned it and, and said, you know, it's going to be the designation of the future. Um, uh, uh, similar to what CFP is in the uh, investing uh, world. Um, and so you really should consider getting it. So those things really kind of led the opportunity. And um, what was nice is that um, as someone who at that time had been in the business for uh, seven or eight years, um, the, the knowledge was there. It wasn't anything that required um, any uh, additional information. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of tested in um, uh, just doing the day in and day out of our industry. And so, um, you know, took the test and uh, um, the information and the materials that were provided to prepare um, were very helpful and, you know, was able to pass the test. That's, you bring up an interesting point, and I, I, I like the way you talk about it, that this is a certification as opposed to a course. And, I, and that throws a lot of people off when they come in. They go, well, how many courses are there? And as you said, there, there's no requirement here other than having the essential knowledge and experience to be a professional, to, to, be, to be able to wear this badge uh, of professionalism in this particular space. So I think that's, that's really interesting for um, you, know, you mentioned there, you, I think when you did it, there probably was this, there's a little study guide that was prepared to help people get ready for the exam. Uh, the exam, as I mentioned earlier, it's, you know, three hours, 150 questions, right? Jeff? You, you went to a testing center, I assume. We didn't have the online proctoring yet then. And uh, you scheduled your own time for the exam once you applied and everything. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Um, it was, and it was pretty straightforward, but if for some reason you did run into any difficulties, there were certainly plenty of phone numbers to assist you with the process, but it was, it was pretty easy. Great. Now, uh, so I talked about how, you know, this is an exam that is meant to uh, uh, demonstrate, you know, to, to have someone prove their knowledge and experience. So, you know, then the question is, well, where did we come up with this exam? And uh, it actually was subject matter experts, NAFA members through a variety of stages. There are people that worked through the job initial job analysis. Then that job analysis was turned over to another group that uh, worked through creating the first form of the exam, as they call it. And then uh, periodically we go through and create more cop you know, versions of the exam. They're called forms. And then every five years we'll be doing a new job analysis review to make sure that it's staying current. But even as we create the exams, one group creates it, then another group reviews it, and it goes on. So now, Michael and Heather, you did not actually take the exam because you were both involved in early process of creating it. And as people who are involved in some form of the creation, um, you weren't eligible to take the exam, so you receive a special dispensation to have earned it since you were deemed expert enough to be our subject matter experts initially. Uh, Michael, can you talk about how you first, you know, what you did, you know, what different steps you've had in being part of uh, creating LACP? 
Well, I think it started with um, a phone call from Diane Powers, who called mm -hmm. me and said, hey, we've seen you do a couple presentations at uh, NAFA P plus P or on a webinar, and you know, we think you might have the knowledge to help us out with this program. Would you be willing to fly out to Raleigh, North Carolina and spend you know, three entire days where we can pick your brain and write questions and rewrite questions and rewrite questions all over for a third and fourth time? And I'm like, well, that sounds kind of interesting. You know, I'm game. Let's see how this works. And uh, it was probably one of the most challenging and also one of the most fun experiences of my career so far. I absolutely loved it. And I got to meet Heather because of it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And so, I, agree. Uh, yeah. go ahead, I was go just going to say that I thought it was what we, the challenge really was goes to, to Jeff's point was we were not trying to trick anybody, right? Like a lot of us take classes and you're always worried about how many double negatives are going to be in the sentence and what are they really trying to ask? And at the end of the day, our task at writing those questions was there needs to be a very objective, this is a definitive answer. Right, like there can be three multiple choice or four multiple choice answers, but the, the right answer has to be very clear to everyone. And so, uh, as Michael said, we, you know, over and over and over some of the questions, I remember there was one question that we spent 45 minutes, you know, just trying to get the wording accurate so that there could be no misconception as to what we were trying to uh, get to at the bottom as the bottom line of what the answer would be. And it, there's, it's a lot more difficult than I would have ever imagined it to be. That, and as somebody who was around that process uh, and me mostly sitting to the side, just kind of marveling at the knowledge you, you and your, your peers who, who were there brought to it um, and, and the agonizing that you did. Uh, and I think we have to probably do a little shout out to uh, our vendor partner, Ms. Scantron, who are the experts um, on testing, but they don't know the industry. So it's, it really is a, a partnership of bringing together the knowledge of this industry and the knowledge of how you fairly and effectively um, make a test. I think that's, I mean, do you recall working with some of the Scantron folks and the going back and forth on on making it. I, I, oh, Heather, I, absolutely. I, I learned what a psychometrician is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, uh, you know, part psychology and a whole lot of statistics. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's, it, it's pretty fascinating. Um, yeah, so now, the other thing is with with this exam, it, it continues to go uh, in constant review. So, you know, there's uh, other subject matter experts who come in and follow, you know, these folks wrote questions and then another group reviewed them and tested them. And then, as Michael said, the psychometricians come in even after the exam, um, like Jeff, you, you, you took the exam and there's a month long window and then the results don't come till uh, a week or two after the exam window closes, correct? That's correct. Yeah, I yeah. think um, I took it in June and I was notified um, either last week in July, first week in August, something like that. And people sometimes ask why that is, and that's because the, the results actually stay with Scantron. Um, and then when they get a batch, they do a statistical analysis. And if they find any oddities, like they'll actually be able to look at a question and say, hey, a lot of people got this wrong, uh, like too many people got it wrong. or the people who got it wrong actually did very well on the test overall. You know, why, why are we tricking the people with the best scores? Because as Heather said, there's no intention of tricking anybody with, with the exam. So, um, so we've earned the LACP, you've got it. You are, as Jeff so, so accurately uh, pointed out, you know, you're very much pioneers in this. We're trying to, to build this up. But have you started to, you know, I understand people don't know it yet, but have you started to, to use it, promote it, uh, talk about it with any of your clients? Um, anybody, how are you using it so far? So well, I'm, oh, sorry, go ahead, Heather. It's okay. I was gonna say, I started using it right away. Uh, the minute that it was, the accreditation went through. Um, Woodbury or advisor group was one of the first companies to allow it to be, you know, on your business card. So it's in my business card, it's on my signature and my email, it's, it's everywhere that I can and put it out there. And you know, there are a lot of people who don't necessarily ask um, what your alphabet soup means, but there are some people that do. And 
I think the most important thing for me when it comes to the different um, designations that you have is it, it comes with the education. And I pride myself on educating my clients on the reasons why they need to have certain solutions in their, in their wheelhouse, right? And so I think that when we talk about people in the financial services industry, you know, there are some people out there that we all know of who think annuities or life insurance are a waste of time and a waste of money. But the, the knowledge and, and having that designation proves that it's much more than that to me, right? It, it's not about earning money. It's about educating my client as to why this is a perfect solution for them. And so sometimes I bring it, I bring the reason for the designation into my meeting to explain to them, you know, this isn't just some, I'm not going off, you know, willy nilly telling you, you need to, to buy something that you don't really need to buy. Right. Like I believe in it enough that I spent the time to get the designation that goes along with this so that I could help you understand why you really need it. And I would just add, um, so I'm also a part of advisor group and uh, it's on my um, uh, uh, ADV uh, part 2B and put it on pretty quickly. But um, I do a lot of networking in order to um, generate business and new business opportunities. And so um, as a part of the referral groups, um, I always make sure that, um, that uh, you know, I, I mention my various designations and the various education that I've had. It's on my signature line in my email. Um, and, and, you know, designations are interesting or certifications are interesting. Um, you know, uh, uh, I know in the CFP world, they refer to it as the gray hair effect. If you have gray hair, they never ask if you have a CFP or in our case, do you have an LACP? But if you don't have that gray hair, they want to make sure that you're the real deal. And that you're not just some fly by night person. So having that allows the door to stay open metaphorically speaking. I agree absolutely, Jeff. You know, I, I started pretty young in my career as a wholesaler. I started working in the, the wholesale side of the business at the age of 19. Um, so I have a little bit of gray in my beard now, but, uh, but yes, exactly. It, having the alphabet soup after your name is kind of the alternative to having um, the visible uh, experience. Uh, and as far as the LACP use goes, John, I, I've like Heather, I started using it immediately as soon as I, thankfully I don't have a broker dealer, so I didn't have to wait for them to say yes. So I started using it. I mean, I changed my email subject probably, or email signature, probably within five minutes of getting the notification that it had been approved. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not wait. Um, and for me, it was absolutely a no brainer. As a wholesaler, life and annuities are my bread and butter. So this is, like we talked about with LUTCF, is the broad base of knowledge. LACP is the depth of knowledge in those two areas. Outstanding. And I'll point out for the folks watching this webinar that um, the LACP comes with a, a digital badge you can access once you've earned it. And so that digital badge actually links back to a group and will verify. Uh, and this is something people should start looking for with all sorts of certifications. It's becoming much more common where this digital badge can go on a, you know, a LinkedIn platform, it can go in an email, it can go on a website. And uh, it's a live link that will take people back to uh, a database and verify that the person who is stating that they have this uh, certification or this designation uh, has it and it's currently valid. And that is one of the benefits of the LACP. And actually it's one of the benefits of the new LUTCF. So, uh, LUTCF goes back 36 years. Uh, we're working on uh, retrofitting, but people from uh, once it came over to Kaplan Financial Education, that was something they instituted uh, going forward. So 2015 forward, folks with LUTCF have that same digital badge they can maintain. And we're working on uh, making an, a retrofit option for the, the folks who've had LUTCF longer. So uh, that's one way to just keep getting getting the word out there. So uh, I'm gonna ask one more time. I know we only have a few people online. If, if there's any questions they wanna type in, uh, can put it in the Q&A. Uh, but before, you know, we didn't want this to go very long. Before we wrap up, I don't know, not to put everyone on the spot one more time, but uh, Jeff, Heather, Michael, if anyone has anything else you wanna say before I do a wrap up, uh, have we kind of covered this? 
the only thing I want to add is that, um, you know, in every industry and, and like many uh, insurance financial advisors, I came from a different industry before I landed in this field. And it was always about what are you doing to keep up with the um, issues of your industry. And so the LUTCF and the LACP and a lot of the other programs that NAFA is offering, uh, some of the advanced uh, uh, programs, really allow you to be on the cutting edge with what um, our members are, are learning and dealing with. And so I, I can't recommend um, pursuing these credentials more um, just so that you can stay on the cutting edge and be uh, a part of this industry. Jeff, I think that's perfectly said. Thank you. That is great. So uh, with that, I would say to anybody who's watching this, um, if you have any questions about uh, LACP or LUTCF, you can go to NAFA.org and click into the Talent Development Center. And then in the Talent Development Center, there's a menu and you'll see uh, certifications and designations. And you can click there and link to the pages. Uh, you can also reach out to me, John Boyle, um, uh, jboyle at NAFA.org. Be happy to answer any questions uh, that you have. So um, with that, uh, that's our little, little overview of NAFA's professional credentials. Uh, thank you to Jeff, Michael, and Heather. We appreciate this very much, not just being part of this panel, but for being the pioneers to bring LACP, uh, you know, the work you've done or jumping in early, Jeff, to, to take the exam and help us get it all up and running. It's much appreciated. So uh, with that, we will wrap up. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, John. Thanks.